I may only humbly utter the words of the CEO of KCIC that uh, these are the men and women who can really transform the commercial forestry sector. I believe in, in, in entrepreneurship and, and I believe in the ideas that uh, they have managed to generate and uh, uh, gone through the several stages of uh, you know, analyzing those ideas, screening those ideas to a level where they are confident with the ideas or the business models. The problem with young people and venturing into commercial forestry is most young people are educated. Most of us have gone to school. We have our undergraduates. And it's the mindset which holds us back. Because a young person won't imagine going all the way to university, studying for four years, then going back to the farm. Yet, in the end, we, we come to realize that it's in the farm where the money is. The community does not know that it has an importance of picking the camera pig uh, from the same tree they are cutting down and, and trying to, to, to benefit out of that. But uh, right now, at our level, we are just buying the gamma in raw form, in raw materials, and we are just trying to export it. But what we need now is to do the validation to increase the, to increase the price for the community so that they leave the Chakobani. You can't have sustainable agriculture if climate change is an issue. And forestry is at the, it's at the forefront of climate action on earth. And I feel like if we were to do agribusiness or agriculture as a whole to succession in a sustainable way, we need to sustain our forests. So this one, uh, through Kenya Climate Innovation Center, what I am seeing is that if everything is in place, these communities will not cut down the trees because the price of gum rabbit will go up. They will see that uh, they are going to pick the gum from that and then trying to sell it. As a youth in forestry, it's, it's really intriguing for me because it is a field where many young people are not involved in because of lack of knowledge. And I feel like being a young person in this space, especially on matters conservation, because Moonlight Initiative's journey started from conserving the riverbanks of uh, River Nyando back in my village. And I feel like apart from conservation of forests, we can only use value add in order for us to, to, to balance the ecosystem. We have had uh, time and again uh, the government making it very clear that uh, the way to go is to increase the forest cover of our republic, which is currently way below the international uh, minimum level of uh, 10%. And so if we look at some of the strategies the government have uh, advocated, it uh, remains that commercial forestry, which is being driven by a market approach, may become one of the greatest uh, uh, puller towards uh, us realizing that 10% cover. And so any effort that is bringing uh, and supporting uh, commercial forestry, uh, to, to me then it is a good effort. And the second thing is that uh, the role that uh, commercial forestry uh, can uh, possibly play in the lives of our people. We are talking about uh, uh, small-scale farmers out there who have the land and only what they have been waiting all these years is a business model that makes use of their land in, in a commercial manner. And so it is uh, a program that has got uh, two, two objectives that can be achieved at the same time. That is meeting our uh, forest cover or tree cover target at the same time uh, helping to eradicate poverty amongst our people.